guys. <laughs> Hey guys. 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 Hello guys. It's me. What's your name? Hello. I feel like Dora. I'm like, hello. How are you? I am great too. Today's video I'm so, so, so excited about because I have found one of world's weirdest makeup sponges ever. I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw someone do a little video and I was like, what? A blue? What is that? It looked fuzzy. It looked like a little creature and I needed it in my life. Of course, after seeing the video, I placed an order and I ordered a bunch. So right here we have it. This is a velvet sort of fuzzy blue makeup sponge and it is called the microfiber velvet sponge okay let's 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 see what the internet has to say about this one okay so here we have it the juno and co microfiber velvet sponge aesthetic hello see it looks fuzzy so this is only six dollars so when i look at the website i see that they have more microfiber fusion sponges like they have all these sort of like innovative Cool thing, smart mirror, what? Here's what it says. Meet the Juno microfiber velvet sponge. If you're looking for a more natural airbrush fun. No. Okay. Made with velvet soft microfiber bristle bristles and a slanted edge for controlled stippling, the Juno microfiber velvet sponge provides buildable coverage Best. Use it wet, wet it, squeeze it, stipple it. Use it dry, dip it, tap it, pat it. I like this marketing. So today I want to put it to the test by actually using it wet for my foundation, concealer, baking, and then I want to use a dry one for bronzing, blush, highlighter. Six dollars. Um, if this blows me away, six dollars is just one click away. <laughs> I'll delete my channel now. Anyways, if you would like to see how this really weird fuzzy makeup sponge works on the skin, then keep on watching. Okay, so going back to how to use it. Use it wet, wet it, squeeze it, stipple it. So I wet it, I squeezed it, and I'm about to stipple it. So before I start playing with the sponge and playing with foundation, of course we have to have a good base. So I have to prime and protect. For this, I'm using the Kypris. Pot of Shade Heelalalalala Tropic. I got this because I'm a girl Jamie Genevieve all the way over in Scotland, which makes me think, I don't, is this from Scotland too? Made in USA. Where's the sponge from? Well, Juno & Co is located in San Francisco. Okay, so putting this on, this is a primer and a sunscreen. <laughs> the foundation I'll be playing with today is a mixture of my Holy Grail Becca 24 Hour Ultimate Coverage and this one by ColourPop. I haven't used this yet. This is the No Filter Foundation and I know this is gonna have my back and with this, I don't know yet, so at least I have insurance. So first I wanna pick up the foundation using the flat butt. Picking it up, okay. And then I'm just gonna st Oh. Girl! Oh my god. <gasps> First thing that is going through my mind is it feels a little bit firmer than a classic beauty blender. Like it feels a little firmer and more secure on the skin. It is pouncing that foundation on like hello. I do, oddly enough, feel the fuzziness. Like I feel that layer of velvet just gliding over the skin. But what I feel like it's doing, it's like almost pushing the foundation more into my pores, making it a little bit more smooth and flawless. What? Like I did not use a pore filling primer before this foundation and I feel like it is definitely hiding the size of my pores. Okay. Another thing I'm noticing is that it is wet. Of course, I wet the sponge, but as soon as you just stipple it on to the skin, it feels dry. So that's like almost messing with your brain a little because I know I wet it, but because of the velvet finish, that fuzzy little finish, it doesn't feel wet or damp. It feels like I'm using a dry sponge. I feel like you only wet the sponge to make it bigger because like the difference is pretty intense. I am shocked that they marketed this as sort of like a a buildable sponge because for me, I feel like it grabs so much more pigment 
than any other beauty sponge out there. Like I feel like this takes maximum coverage out of a product and brings it there. Let's see if it makes a little sound since our ASMR addicts are watching. I don't feel like it's soaking up too much product. Of course, every beauty sponge out there is gonna soak up product. That's just what beauty sponges do. But I don't feel like this is doing an extra job of like absorbing too much product. If anything, I feel like the, the, the velvet sort of barrier is like pushing product out. That is looking really, really good so far for $6, are you kidding me? Okay, so I applied the foundation using the flat sort of butt area, and now I wanna apply the concealer using this sort of classic beauty blender side. Boom. It's so weird, but it blurs pores for me. I don't have to use a lot of pressure at all to sort of blend the product in. It kind of does all the work for me. Honestly, for $6, this is insane. I'm just tapping it in, going up and down. You never wanna sort of drag a sponge onto your face because then you smear the product out and it really gets rid of all the coverage that you want from a product. Rule number one, if you're new to beauty sponges, always use up and down motions but it's just so soft and delicate on the skin. And then when you really go up close, it is like a veil of softness over the pores. As far as what side I like better to blend in product, I kind of like how I did it right now by using the, the flat edge for foundation. And I use the sort of the round edge for all the little corners for concealer. So I definitely like that. Oh my God, I look airbrushed. Now the true test for me comes right now with baking the under eyes. When I bake my under eyes, a lesson I learned years ago is that if you use a damp sponge, it's sort of gonna create this special effect with the powder where it dries in on the skin and that makes it last for so long. Whereas this, because it feels dry at the touch of the skin, I don't know if it's gonna have the same reaction, but let's find out. I'm taking my Fit Me Loose powder by Maybelline, my favorite under eye powder. And since we used the flat edge, the round edge, now let's use this little edge right here to set with. Golden rule, always go in with your sponge first to get rid of any creases. Dipping in, stamping it on. Oh my God. This is bizarre. It blended the powder into my skin in one go. So normally when I pack that powder on, you can see on camera that I have a lot of powder laying on top of my skin. Now it sort of pushed it into the little fuzziness and it only applied what it needed onto the skin. And this is now set, but it still looks like beautifully set skin. Amazed. I know when I say that it pushes product into the pores, that might sound a little scary because you're like, I can imagine you thinking, I don't want any products up in my pores, but I'm saying that it sort of fills up any sort of unevenness and texture. Now I'm gonna do the rest of my face, uh, do my eyes, eyebrows, all of that. And then I will be back to test it out dry to see how it applies bronzer, blush, highlighter, and all of that good stuff. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back with a lot a lot of eye makeup. And I just wanted to let you know that today I use the brand new Afrique Eyeshadow Palette by Juvia's Place. You guys know my love for Juvia's Place is undying. It will never stop. Like I love their shadows so much. I think they have the best eyeshadows on the market. I did wanna show you this. This is the look I created with it. And if you wanna save some money on Juvia's Place, this already is super affordable, but if you wanna save even more money, you can use a discount code Nikki at checkout. Back to the Velvet Sponge by Juno. So when I look at the website, it says use it dry. Perfect for powder bronzers, blush, and highlighter. So I do really wanna try it with those products as well. So first, dipping into my Jouer Bronzing Duo for light to medium skin tones. I've never in my life used a sponge to apply bronzer, contour, blush, and highlight. So let's see how this goes. So like I said, I'm just gonna pat it onto the skin and I'm using soft circle shapes, like a circle pattern. And oh, a little bit more and just make sure that you Really tap it in to distribute and blend. 
oh wow okay that did not lift up the product it did not create any like weird holes or streaks into my base so I like this but it's very soft and minimal and I feel like it will take you a little bit too long but we will try it with contouring in a little bit because I feel like with contouring you need that bit more precision and I feel like this really offers that but for bronzer you kind of just want to get it on okay so that is bronzer and now we can go in with contouring and the sponge for more precision picking some up on the sponge that looks intimidating and like I said really use like a circle pattern when tapping it in and oh my god I look snatched look at that precision like you don't even have to go in with a brush later to like carve the cheeks out it's there now I also think using this technique with the sponge and a powder product especially with blush is going to be too concentrated and too much so I'm just going to dip in with my favorite blush brush this one is by peaches makeup and going in with a juvia's place blush this one is in the color Serafina and it is a beautiful vibrant coral peach now you guys know I love of blush so I never hold back but if you're not a blush type of person definitely don't use as much as I am using right now time for a highlighter and I do want to try the sponge with this actually I feel like Jaclyn Hill was one of the first to introduce applying highlighters with a sponge I'm using this Ofra highlighter in Star Island one of their new shades which I'm really really liking buffing it into Okay. What I'm noticing is that it makes it a lot more subdued and soft. But you're on my channel and you know that I love an intense highlight, so a brush it is. Since applying the Star Island with a brush makes it so bright, um, you don't always want the brightest highlight on your forehead because that can make you look a little bit too oily. Judging by what I just said, if I pick up the highlighter on the sponge and pick up like a really, really bright highlighter, I can actually use it as a strobing highlight on the forehead. Let's see. Tapping it in. Tap, 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 tap. And I am right. Same goes for the chin. You never really want to put too much shine on the chin because it can make you look oily. But using this technique, it is more of like a soft shimmer. For lip, I want to do like a, a darkish, nudish, colorish. This Makeup Addiction Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Bare Faced. And that concludes my review slash first impressions video on this Juno & Co Velvet Makeup Sponge. Fuzzy Velvet Makeup Sponge. Honestly, so, so, so intrigued by this. I am amazed by this for only $6 for it to make my skin look so flawless and for products to just lay on top of the skin, no, actually just blend into the skin so beautifully, I am a huge, huge fan. Texture-wise, I've never played with a sponge like this. Like this is in a league of its own. It's fuzzy and it has its own fuzzy league and it's right at the top. I think if you are looking for a very affordable makeup sponge that is just gonna make products look very, very soft and flawless on the skin, you absolutely have to give this a go. Um, yeah, I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this first impressions slash review video, then please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And you know what? I am in a very, very shareable mood. I'm gonna give away 10 of these sponges, so go ahead and comment down below what you think is so cool about this sponge and that enters you into the competition. And of course, you have to like this video and be subscribed to my channel. So comment, like, and subscribe and you're entered into this giveaway. So thank you so much for watching. I love you and hopefully I will see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.